Like, if you have a bad day at school and you come to PAL, like, you feel better. They make you feel like, like, a family, I guess. Every day to come here to PAL. Why? Because I, I like, I love here. I be when my mom bring me, I was like new, and, and now I know everybody. Sometimes we have this computer expert who comes in the clubhouse and he teaches us how to use the computers and we get to have fun. And there's this um, game room where you could play with staff members and volunteers. I think Gretchen and Glory, they're a staff member here. They are someone that they can, you can talk to and they'll make you feel good about yourself and not make myself think that I'm nothing, like I'm pathetic and stuff like that. Uh, I sometimes struggled with uh, math and I get help and and I figure out um, things by like do, like doing an example and then do the problem and like doing more problems and and you figure and I figure it out. So the kids come here right after school. Many of them walk or um, get a parent to drop them off and they work on their homework. Um, they have fun by playing different games and participating in different classes that we offer. Um, everything from cooking to fitness classes, um, computer help, computer courses, um, and it's a routine for them to come every day. Portland Powell Youth Center is an after-school program for ages 8 to 18. We offer different programs for the youth to enjoy, to be involved in. I want to see all She is. He, let, hey, he gave it to them. To know that we're providing a place for them to be nurtured and they're safe and they're getting a snack and they're getting help with their homework. They're going home and they have had a great time and it's just really important to know that there's a place like this. Many parents have told me, like, I don't know what we do without you. So PAL is, it's a must for these kids. My mother inspired me uh, when I was three years old. My father passed away and my mom was a single parent, like 85% of the kids here. Um, so I feel like I relate to them and I've been through some of the trials and tribulations that they're going through. We got a math club today, so that's how you're gonna be playing the video games. You can play video games if you take math club. I cool. take it every day. Cool. All right, come on. I was a kid that attended PAL at eight years old. Um, I attended PAL probably till about 16, 17. This is a safe haven for me, the second home, you know? Um, I found a lot of great outlets here through basketball, through sports, through friendships, through mentorships. You know what I'm saying? It was just things that um, really helped me um, get through the, some of the rough patches there um, in growing up. It's something that when you're a part of it, you can feel it. You know what it is, that community feeling that it's this, it's this strong power that POW kids have. Does he have the table needs the We're talking about struggling youth, kids that need to see consistency. They all the time seeing you and trusting you and building this bond. That's important. They don't have that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When I was a kid, I didn't have that. And so when I had it with the staff here, that was important to me. You got the video games today, right? Right. right? Go to math club. Let's go. Let's go. Anybody in here going to the video game today? I'll go to math club, Austin. Math Austin. Math Austin. I go to archery. You're an archer? Okay, you better go ahead and get ready. So every time you step up to the line, I want you to think about every one of the fundamentals. Put yourself in place, one foot on either side of the line. Check your stance, make sure you're square, make sure you're not leaning one way or the other. The, the reason we started the program, uh, the archery program here at PAL, is because it's, a, it's considered a non-traditional sport. A lot of kids get to participate in basketball, football, soccer, those kinds of things. Not a lot of kids get to participate in archery. They want they they want they want to belong to something. That's what they want. They want they want they like they like tournaments and they like clubs, and they like field trips. You know they want to, they want to be a part of a bigger family, an extended family, and that's what we provide. Well, my day consists of telling them to read, read, and read. 
and helping them with schoolwork that they have. Aside from that, I play a lot of games. I'm a big kid at heart. Uh, I've been coming here since I was in the fourth grade, and I like coming here because I play basketball a lot, and then all the kids here are like family, basically. Last year was a tough year for me because it was like I'm just going into middle school and everything, and like it was crazy, but then when I came down here, I can like just let everything go and just be myself. I'm interested in art, making art, making sculptures. I'm interested in playing football and basketball. Miss Carrie is a really fun person. Like she's fun to be around with. She's joyful every day when I walk into the PAL Center. So every day we have different daily activities. Uh, so today we're doing Portland City scapes, night scapes. Um, this is an example. So. Um, try and mix it up. Today we are cutting shapes and gluing. Uh, yesterday we made handbags, so there are a couple girls finishing up uh, cloth tote bags. And watching them kind of go through the process and come out with something beautiful that they appreciate. So, yeah. I'm helping children. That's the hook, really, that's the motivation for me is I'm at a position now to where I can help kids do the exact same thing I did. Come here, get a job, be a mentor, be a role model, teach these kids good citizenship. And it's what the officers and it's what PAL has taught me to do is be a good citizen. You have people that are dependent on you. You have kids that are dependent on you. The kids are seeing officers here. We've got them in all of our programs. They're volunteering their time. They're mentoring. So we're bringing that, bringing kids, cops, community together type thing to where they can see a cop and they can see the human side of the policeman. Not every family could afford uh, like a daycare every day, but here we provide services and it's not very expensive and so at-risk youth and families can come and have a safe place. Uh, at-risk youth usually means for us like gang affected youth or kids who might get in trouble out if they're not in a safe environment. Uh, if they have problems, I try to help with that. Uh, I just want them to feel comfortable around me and in this place and make sure they know that they're not alone. Um, my education was criminal justice, so when I came here I didn't have any sort of teaching experience. So just being able to um, really meet the kids where they're at. I think treating the kids as people and as individuals that have opinions and have an individual outlook on life and respecting them as people and then that earns respect and trust back. <laughs> my history with PAL is, PAL is my history. I'm a lifer. I've been a, a part of the Police Activities League since I was nine years old. In the neighborhood I grew up, I grew up on 45th and Killingsworth, right next to Whitaker. So you got to see a little bit of everything, you know, a little bit of drug dealing, you know, gang members, the whole, the whole spiel. And for me, all I ever heard was, you know, forget the police, the police are bad, or just a negative thing about them. And I can honestly say my entire life, I've never had a real bad rapport with any police officer. You know, most of them had known me since I was like nine, since I was nine. So anytime people want to be like, oh man, this cop is terrible. And it's like, um, he taught basketball at Powell Camp. Like, he's a pretty good guy. That's what I know about the police. There's just a big need. You know, a lot of these kids have needs. You know, and you know, we need to be able to provide them books to read and pencils and notebooks and you know, be able to have barbecues for them and have fun stuff that sometimes they're not able to have outside of this place, you know, because some of these kids don't have that at home. So this is kind of the second home to some of these kids. Here at PAL, it's, it's not, I wouldn't say it's really geared towards these kids getting in trouble. Um, it's, it's more geared towards letting them have a, uh, a positive interaction with a police officer that they may not get um, at any other circumstance. Most of the time when, when police are involved, uh, it's normally because we're called somewhere to deal with a traumatic situation for anyone that, that, that's going through that thing. Versus here, me having the opportunity to be here and interact, play games, um, answer questions, sit and talk with them. Uh, I think that's a different, different atmosphere that most kids don't, don't get to experience. And it's a place where kids like to belong. There, it's a disciplined environment. 
They feel safe when they're here. There's some social contact that takes place here by kids that come here and uh, it isn't just about boxing or about working out. They come here and they see people that they recognize. They see friends from school. They see friends, they make friends in this environment. So it's a place that they belong to that's positive, that their parents are behind, that their parents support. What do you get out of it? Oh, it just helps me get out my anger. I, like, gets me out my anger. I'm fortunate enough, I came up as a pal kid in New York City when I was a young um, child, mm -hmm. and I've uh, been fortunate enough to be involved in this program since we started. Most kids are in a position that uh, the little bit of input that you can give makes such a big difference for them. I think we have a lot of volunteers, a lot of staff from PAL, we have a lot of uh, law enforcement people that are involved in PAL that are mentors for a lot of these young folks coming up right now. They taught me everything that I know right now in school, but mainly like I don't, my morals come from here. I, I follow in their footsteps. Uh, I've been going here since I was eight years old. So I'm, I'm 17 now, so nine years. Uh, it's a life changer, actually. I learned a lot of experiences like playing basketball. I got way better by playing with boys. I've been coming here since forever. Uh, I, I believe since the third grade. Uh, yeah, third grade was good third grade. My dad signed me up and uh, just started going ever since. It's not just a job or a place to just come. We actually build relationships with kids, and they look up to us now because they know there's not we we actually care. It's not just for a paycheck. Half of the, like most of these uh, staff members work here because they want to change kids' lives, and they I'm one of the kids that they change their lives too. So that's what they're doing. All of the rest. I believe it is a great way for for kids to get out of the real world and stress out of there and is become into a whole nother community that is really loving for them. It gives kids to do something better than be on the streets, be involved in all this horrible things that's going on right now with teenagers. And if you just come to Powell, there's so many options. Like you can play basketball, you can volunteer, you can do a whole bunch of interacting, you can tutor kids. Why wouldn't you want to do that? Like, it's so many opportunities that you could change your life and change other lives. For some reason, our society is really uh, acceptable to, we'll dump a ton of money into prisons um, to keep bad people locked up, but I think the focus should change to what can we do to intervene so we prevent people from going to prison. It, like, if my basketball career doesn't work out, I kind of want to be a lawyer or own a business, either way.